Welcome to the Nordic Mythology Podcast. I'm Daniel Farron, corner of the company Horns Vodin, and I'm joined, as always, by Dr. Matthias Nordvig. Hello, everyone. This time we're joined by Hrabnhildur Guyunsdottir, also known as Hapa from Hapa Nera uh, Tattoo in Iceland. Welcome, Hapa. Thank you. How are you guys? <laughs> and I'm much better now Matthias did the introduction of your name. Because... <laughs> yeah, it was really good. I was surprised. There was no way. Thing or two. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I was getting through that. Uh, a, a quick little funny story about that. We, with me and Sarah, well, I, I first met Hava oh, in, kind of in England in uh, Landudno with, with Sean Parry briefly. And then when we were going to Iceland, I sent Hava a message and asked if I could get a tattoo. But I didn't know your name at the time. I just knew, like, I just saw it on Facebook and I had no idea how to pronounce it. So we came to the tattoo studio and I just assumed it was going to be you at your tattoo studio and it would, it would be really easy and it wouldn't matter if I could pronounce your name. But when I got there, there was a, you were nowhere to be found and there was another gentleman there and he would just look to me and I was like, I have no idea from the right place. I don't know how to <laughs> pronounce the name. <laughs> and I was just like, looked at it and I was like, this is just the weirdest kind of, amalgamation of vowels and consonants I've ever seen and I just kind of mumbled it out and I think he grasped what I was trying to say he was like oh Habe yeah she's in the back she'll be out in two minutes and I was like <laughs> like that name to me in my silly English mind just does not work it is just even hearing it I'm just like what <laughs> <laughs> well you are forgiven it's quite a hard name it, I think it's the hardest name we've had on the podcast so far are you gonna try it though? Are you gonna try and pronounce it? Oh, I think I could get it now. Yeah, try. Hrafhilda. Almost. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, the, it's like the second <laughs> roll there. There's no way I'm getting that. I'm just gonna give up now. If you if you're like quite slow at it, uh, like Sean does, then it's Hrafhildur. Yeah, I think once I'd heard it, I kind of was like, okay, I can see that now. But before I'd heard it pronounced, I was just, I, I couldn't even guess. I just looked and it was like, I almost like just walked over to the guy with your Facebook open and just like showed him the Facebook and was like, this person, please, is she here somewhere? Where's the, the blonde weirdo? <laughs> That's it, well, yeah. I mean, naturally, as a Dane, of course, I, I, I take some pride in, in being able to pronounce Icelandic somewhat well. Uh, of course, not perfectly, but somewhat well. Um, I've been well, practicing on Grappa Barra Kreuter and things like that. What oh, my what favorite. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a rhubarb porridge. Yes. That's okay. delicacy. That's, that sounds like it's right up my street. I love rhubarb. <laughs> oh, rhubarb pie. Oh, it's the best. Yep. Rhubarb crumble. I don't know. Do you guys have crumbles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. I don't know if that it seems like a British thing, a crumble to me. I don't know. Dude, you well, have no idea how much British there actually is in the North Atlantic in general, both in Iceland. Well, the, the British military brought a lot of stuff here, like lots of recipes, lots of things. Like we still, um, things here in Iceland that I thought was completely Icelandic. I was just like, oh, this is actually really popular in England. So that's what the military brought over. Yeah, we did that quite a few places. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to put it. <laughs> Some good, some bad, I guess. <laughs> how, about, how how are you? I know you're recovering at the minute. Yeah, I am doing really good. Everything's healing according to plan, and I'm just super happy. I was having a, uh, it's called brachioplasty. I think I pronounced that right. Um, an arm lift. So when you have lots of sagging skin because I lost a lot of weight, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was just removing all that excessive skin. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i never realized that you were i don't know how to, how to put it nicely bigger i guess um <laughs> how, what what was you at your heaviest if i can ask um i don't remember what it is in pounds or anything or stone like you use i, I have no idea about stone but yeah it was 150 kilos okay um, so that's roughly 400 so pound no, yeah. 350 ish. Three, 350 ish. Yeah. Something like that. So I've lost about 110, maybe. 
mm-hmm. around that pounds. Yeah, which yeah. is a lot, a lot of weight. It's it's a few of my friends weigh that much, so I was like, okay, I've, <laughs> I've lost basically you as like a whole person. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's insane. I mean, I I think I, I saw you share a picture of you before and and now, and it's it's such a difference. And I guess it must make the biggest difference to you as well. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I'm definitely lighter on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what what started? What started that? What made you get to the point where you were like, "No, fuck this! I need to." Well, I I did try all the things that you know, like when you're at the at your heaviest and you're kind of desperate, you try all these sort of different diets, mm-hmm. and nothing worked. It just made it worse. I just got heavier after trying it out, and then um, one day I, I I went to my doctor and I was just like, "Can you please help me? I don't know what to do." And he's like, "Yeah, I'll sign you up for this program." And he signed me up for this uh, thing called Reykjalundur. It's a um, it's a place where you can go and recover from heart uh, surgeries and lung surgeries, and also if you are really heavy. So basically, all of you are there, and you're just getting healthier, and you're eating like learning how to eat correctly and move. But nothing mm-hmm. is forbidden. Like you're allowed to do everything. It's just like instead of maybe like if you really want a sweaty burger you just take one of the buns off and you just like eat a little bit less like put the sauce on the side so you're not like Mm -hmm. just lathering it in sauce and it's like all these tiny little changes it's not so overwhelming so uh just while i was there for six weeks i lost about six kilos just by doing that like eating whatever Mm -hmm. i wanted and just moving a bit more and then Mm -hmm. Uh, I just learned how to live again, okay. but not in the same way I did. Yeah. So, I guess once yeah. you start seeing the positive change, then it may makes it a little bit easier, I guess, to to keep it going. Yeah, it was also a lot to do with my mental state. My mental state mm-hmm. was very bad when I was growing up. Like, um, I was bullied a lot. Uh, it was just, like, super difficult time when I was in primary school and my teenage years. I had some friends I could relate to, but in school, it was like, I didn't really feel good there. Mm-hmm. So once I uh, got like uh, stopped primary school or graduated, um, I started just trying to get a positive mental health. Mm-hmm. So with that, it just, everything started to get better. And I started mm-hmm. to study what I wanted. I started hanging out with people who are not toxic and I started mm-hmm. just exercising, doing what I want. Oh, yeah. And uh, I applied for Art Academy and I got in. That was really good. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, during that time, I was at my heaviest. And like uh, then the year I spent in the Art Academy, I, I lost so much weight. Mm-hmm. And I was just so happy doing what I love. Yeah. And finally getting my hands on, you know, like studying something I have a lot of passion for. It changed mm-hmm. a lot for me. Oh no, that, that's that's amazing to hear. I think it, even though that you know, I wanted to speak about this with you because I know it's not strictly kind of Nordic mythology based. It's it's so inspirational to people um, because it can be so hard when you get stuck in that cycle of just eating, and you you know you think eating something is going to make you feel better, and momentarily it does, and then straight away after you're like, fuck, I shouldn't yeah. be eating that, and you can't take it back unless you're going to be sick, and then it's like. But it's it's just this horrible cycle. Um, so so I, I find it so refreshing when you see people manage to break it because it is such a hard thing. You know, I'm going a bit over lockdown. I, I've put on maybe, I don't know, maybe like 10 kilos. It's not like a, a huge, like life-changing amount of weight, but it's it's enough that I've noticed. And I've gone, you know, I need to do something about it. So me and Sarah are going on like a nine-week strict diet tomorrow. Actually, oh, well done. Uh, so we're just gonna do we're gonna do that, um, and it's just I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to like getting back into that routine because um, I'm starting to look how Mateus sounds. Which is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, I don't know oh. if you have seen I don't know if you saw one of the one of the people commented that um, Mateus sounds like a heavier set gentleman. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was one of the our comments that we got on YouTube, which uh, I'm never going to let him move down. I don't well, know to the listeners, he's from. very handsome lad. So yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where where he comes from. Like, I don't know how you can sound that way, but I'm <laughs> never it, letting you go, get away. With you, know, you know, so to, just to like you know uh, fit the role, I just had two ice cream sandwiches before i went on so yeah i'm, I'm working on it <laughs> I'm going in the other direction. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> i think I, I i didn't know that um i guess i guess iceland offered something like that where you could go away for for six weeks so i i can never imagine them, them doing something like that in england i've never heard of it i think over here the answer is either you do it yourself or you they uh, maybe like a gastric band they might offer um, yeah. But even with that, it's not changing somebody's mental, you know, their mental outlook. They're not changing their habits. There's so many people who will get a gastric band and then just because even though you, you know, you cut the stomach down to a quarter of its size, after a year, if you keep eating, the stomach just expands back and and you go back to where you were. So it's not a long term fix. Whereas I think Iceland have probably got it spot on with changing people's mental attitude and helping with that rather than just cutting your stomach up and being like oh yeah, yeah there well, you go can't eat that, is, now. that is one of the options after this program so mm-hmm. um if you go through this program and you complete it uh you can apply to have your gastric band or whatever they do uh, free of charge but it's very hard to get into this program it's like um, a long waiting list and so people who really desperately want to just do it right now they have to mm-hmm. pay for it themselves okay. but yeah it was an option and they told us all at the end of the course that it was like, okay, you can you can choose to have the surgery or you can choose to not have the surgery. And I decided like, okay, since this is mostly about mental mental work and, and trying to figure everything out yourself anyway, then mm-hmm. uh, I just uh, I decided like, okay, I'm just going to try it myself mm-hmm. before I, I do life-changing surgery. And um, yeah, so for me it worked, but for some other people it might not work and they feel like they have to do the surgery which is fine mm. as well oh ab- absolutely but i think having that 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 program in place to start with that's gonna help at least change your mindset and because then it's habits it's you know if, if your habit is to reach for for food every time you're sad then that's not having surgery isn't going to ch- break those habits they need to be snapped as well i guess exactly I, like, I, I really love how uh, how wholesome it sounds. This program, mm-hmm. like absolutely, you know, there, there's there are so many, you know, very toxic ways that that people try to force other people to to, to lose weight in this world. So, mm-hmm. so I'm really happy to hear that Iceland has a program like that. I uh, I I feel a little like you, Dan. I, I'm not sure I, uh, that that Denmark uh, would offer something similar. They would just be like get that plastic band <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it you know so like yeah it, does. it definitely sounds like they've got it spot on yeah i mean over in england they probably just put you on a reality tv show and get some people to show you know? <laughs> <laughs> we, we've all seen them oh can you do like a little britain where they eat dust <laughs> yeah that's it like give you like a cracker and and yeah. some some guy just comes and screams at you but <laughs> I don't think it works long term. So yeah, like I said, I I wanted to speak about because I I think it's very, very inspirational. Um, and obviously it must have worked if you're at the stage now where you're having the skin removed, and uh, I, I imagine that must make a huge difference on its oh, own as so well. Much. Yeah, I think um, from my tummy tuck that I got, it was like so much loose skin. It was about um, like ten pounds, I think. So wow. that they I didn't even think about that. So, so this added weight loss, I guess, just from the, just yeah. from the skin. Yeah, it's crazy. And uh, wow. from my arms, I think they took about uh, like a kilo in total, which is like, what two pounds or something. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Good, good for you, honestly. If you like... if you need to lose some weight, just cut up an arm. It works as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, I've definitely been gaining weight over the last year as well because you know he ended up sitting down. Mm-hmm. Then I started trying to mentally cope by 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 making those little dystopian scenarios with gummy bears. Somebody had to eat those gummy bears afterwards. Well, that's yeah. That's <laughs> that's it. it. So <laughs> I started the pandemic by by munching gummy bears. 
definitely. Yeah, it's, it's been it's, it's been a tough time. Like I'm glad that now gyms are back open because for me, I've always been active and severing that bond with the gym that I had, which you know I have a I have a stressful job running a business, and the gym was always a, a big release. So I noticed straight when I noticed in Sarah as well, just the mental health side of things, not having that that gym there, it just just made me sad and then when you're sad you just want to eat some food because apparently that's going to make you better but it doesn't and then you just get into this habit of well if i'm not training there's no point eating well but then as soon as you you get back to going to the gym you want to eat better because you want to to feel as gain so it was just a a sad time i think but tomorrow we have a new gym opening up right right down the road from us so that's why it's a it's a nice start yeah, yeah, well, when you when you start eating bad food, you like your body just craves that more and more. <laughs> I'm kind of in that spot now. It's like, oh, sugar. Okay, so now I just want more sugar and more salt. But if you're if you're actually exercising, you your body just craves healthy food. Mm-hmm. It craves the nutrition that it needs. Mm-hmm. For sure. After the yeah, moving. I mean, sugar sugar is a, a drug, ultimately. It is just it's it's the, same, it's the same as caffeine or any other drug, and you do get addicted to it. Um, yeah, don't diss caffeine, though. Oh, no, I can't go without caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> I always have a, a mug of coffee right before. We've turned into a fitness podcast. Who thought that? <laughs> <laughs> we can that do it all. That was your plan all along. I knew it that was yeah. your plan all along. <laughs> we can do everything. Yeah. I know I actually know a little bit about that. The rest, I just have to wing it every week. <laughs> you just wanted to discuss this to sell more T-shirts, Dan. That's it, exactly. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, coincidentally, you know, sports range come in uh, maybe July, <laughs> August time. Everyone wants to get back in shape. I, I, I will have to get in, into that. I'm, I'm going to get some clothes from you. <laughs> there I, we, uh, speaking we can of change it. topic now. Um. <laughs> um yeah, no, like, uh, Dan, uh, we have to do the Saitherbrook, um, the, 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 the sweatpants with, um, with all the magic, uh, symbols oh, on them. You sent me, yeah, you sent me those. You want to do some, I guess that fits with the episode, some, some, so, jog, some jogging pants with different, I guess, Icelandic sta- magical staves on them. Yeah. Can we please do necro pants once? Yes, uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> you have them like furry and <laughs> with a stave on it and everything and a scrotum, please. Yes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> there we, yes, we'll have to get them in the works. <laughs> okay, let's... <laughs> There's not going to be an episode without somebody mentioning scrotum. There's always got to be a dick or a scrotum. Oh, without, yeah, of course. Without a doubt. <laughs> so, to keep your about... coins in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How about your best known, I guess, as a tattoo artist? Um, primarily, do you solely do hand poke? You don't do any yes. machine work at all? Uh, I know how to work the machine, but I haven't touched it in probably a year, I would guess. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I do it from time to time, but only work on it uh, with my friends or my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my mom like really wants me to just uh, practice on her everything I want to do with a machine. So yeah, I always have a canvas. <laughs> nice. Sounds so, like yeah. a cool mom. <laughs> We're at at work. I only do hand poking. What made What made you go down that route of sticking just to? Because I guess obviously, machine would technically be faster. Even though you are really quick with a with hand poke, I found that out in person. Um, when we're stabbing your finger <laughs> does it yeah exactly <laughs> um yeah what 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 made you want to go just solely hand poke um i started out learning how to hand poke and um it was just basically a coincidence that i went down that road but i started just poking my friends and uh, and i poked some more friends then i started poking their friends and all of a sudden <laughs> i was just you know doing it as a career and mm-hmm. I bought a, I bought two machines, like two really good machines, and I started using them a little bit. Um, but I just don't, I just don't crave using machines. It's, it's more like if you're used to oil painting, um, mm-hmm. I might use acrylics from time to time, but I always go back to the oil painting. You know, it's it's basically just a preference, and I 
I don't know. There's something something special about it in my eyes. Mm -hmm. No, there. This like you, I guess, was my handpoke Virginia. Is that the right way to put it? I don't really know how to <laughs> uh, how to phrase it. <laughs> um, yeah, it was the first, it was the first handpoke tattoo I had, which I I opted for my finger. Um, and I have a couple of fingers done, and without a doubt, the the one you did is the one that it was the first one, but it's the one that stayed in the best. It's kind of got the thickest line. Nothing's uh, faded on it yet. So there's definitely something to be said about the I guess not necessarily the quality of tattoo because there's nothing wrong with the other ones but the way that it seems to sit and heal definitely seems to be different than with the um, machine tattoo yeah well uh, the way the way i do it uh, especially for the fingers is i can really feel what i'm doing and i know well, so okay, I. yeah <laughs> you can feel it even more uh yeah so i can really know how deep i can go on each part of the finger because like more towards the nail as you found out you mm -hmm. have to stab a little bit harder mm -hmm. and it's a little bit more painful and it's just horrible all around yes. but uh more towards the hands it's easier so there i poke more gently and um, <laughs> with the machine i guess you just go the same amount over mm -hmm. the whole thing and yeah. you can't really like you don't have the same feeling because the machine is doing you know the the stabbing for you basically mm -hmm. uh, and i think that's the main difference yeah definitely the it didn't seem to be have as much trauma to it. It certainly yeah. seemed to heal, heal a lot quicker and didn't get like the scaliness that you normally would get. Yeah, it's because um, basically what I'm doing is the same as the machine, but the machine does it like uh, 60 to 100 times per minute, I think, so around that. Um, versus I just do it like just enough to get the ink in mm -hmm. and until I'm happy with the lines and they're crisp and nice. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, the machine packs it in way more. So it mm -hmm. bleeds more and the the skin tries to get get rid of the excess ink. But okay. I only stab enough for the ink to stay. Mm. So there's no excess and it's just it just heals straight away. It's just really nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, I uh, most of my, my left arm um, is hand poked. Um, and uh, by whom? No, um, Ufe Ben. Oh nice. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, no, I really no noticed the difference between the machine and, and the hand poke. It was, it was healing much faster and, and it was much more pleasant, so to speak afterwards, <laughs> but during, oh, yeah. during the session, at some point I just got so fucking annoyed <laughs> by the feeling of, it's, uh, of it's the, the needle going in. It's like, yeah, it's the plucking <laughs> feeling. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I was, yeah, I, I didn't expect that when you, cause it's almost like, I guess the needle goes in and then maybe gets stuck as it comes out and pulls the skin up. Uh, the yeah, you, right. you do it on purpose. So. Oh, oh, I thought it was an accident. I didn't know you were doing no. it on purpose. No, you kind of like aim, aim the needle so it uh, like plucks the skin a little bit. So you like ankle it a little bit when you go out and mm -hmm. that makes the dots crispier. Yeah, because basically like it sucks the, uh, the ink into yeah. under the skin, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Like kind of flings it in there. Yeah, yeah. That's, I would say, Sarah, you did uh, a stave on Sarah in between her, in between her boobs, I guess, on her sternum, um, <laughs> and she, like, she sat there and took that well. And sternum's a sore place to have, um, but she's she's a psychopath because, <laughs> she, like, that she told me after, like, that hurt a lot. Like she's like that. That's the story how I've had that. that just because I guess of the placement of it. Yeah. But she's that nice. She will not show that to anyone. Like I was at like, wincing. I was like, oh, my finger, stop. <laughs> but oh, like, no. like she, she won't want to put you out or make you feel bad for putting her in pain. So we'll sit there, stone faced, and show no, like no emotion. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? How can you do that? She's just lovely. You're just thinking that of me. It's too nice. It's too nice. It's genuinely she's she's just too nice that she can just take unbelievable pain and not think well, twice with, about it. With, with myself, when I get tattoos, it's only two things: it's staying completely silent and just like breathing and doing like breathing mm -hmm. exercises and really focusing just on letting the pain go through you. Or I'm just like, Ugh, you know, cursing. I'm not going to do that. 
on the show, but like, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I can do it in Icelandic. The hell we sounds good on steam as fuck. <laughs> okay, that last one wasn't uh, particularly <laughs> Icelandic. <laughs> no. That one is universal at this point. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> no, it's um yeah, I mean I was very surprised at how much ink goes in with each pluck, I guess, mm. rather compared to with a gun or with a, a machine, I thought it would be really a lot slower, but I was surprised at how quick quick you are. Obviously, I, you were never going to be as quick as a machine because you just, your little hand can't go that quick, I guess. But it's <laughs> certainly, it's, it's certainly not as slow as I expected. And I guess is that just down to you and your experience? Um, I know a lot of hamburgers who are, very slow and lots of hamburgers who are very fast so mm-hmm. i think it just depends on what kind of method you use i guess of getting the ink in but for me i just like just pound it in there you know and mm-hmm. um it works with me because i know like i i can follow the lines without just going everywhere so that helps <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, mateus were you gonna yeah, no, I was going to say that um, it's interesting because uh, hand poking seems to be like becoming a, a, a really sort of like big thing in Scandinavia and Europe in general, I feel like. There's more and more than doing it. But it seems like it still has a pretty bad rep over here in the U.S. People basically associated with prison tattoos. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's but, the difference between stick and poke and hand poke in my eyes. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I just, I, I think it's really cool. Um, and I think it also, I, 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 what I'm seeing is that, you know, a really good hand, a hand poker um, can do it as fast as a, as a machine. So like, just, there's no, like, maybe one day we can even get to the point where we don't even need machines anymore. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Go back I'd, to the basics. Back to the basics. Yeah. Yeah. That's something very traditional about it even though i guess we don't know whether vikings were tattooed but it's it's very there's something if they were it wasn't by a machine yeah exactly (laughs) i i would guess for myself i would guess that they were tattooed just because they traveled a lot and they could have learned that method from someone Mm -hmm. uh, around the world and also they were obsessed with decorating themselves so might might be you know i think it's a strong possibility at least yeah no i um have, have, i've done a little bit of research into it um i was actually going to give a talk about this on uh, at the saga conference in finland uh this year but that's canceled as far as i know can't remember anyway um the uh there's a lot of interesting source material for like that northwestern corner of europe um, that is especially the British Isles, but also just like, you know, more than Germany and stuff like that. Um, mostly Roman that talks about people with that are coloring their, their skin in different ways. Usually it's the, the typical stories of, like, associated with the Picts and the Scots and so on, that they, that they have some kind of like tradition for tattooing. It, the, the problem with the language is that it's often quite like, like we can't really say if they if we're dealing with tattooing or if it's something else or it's just like coloring your skin, but there's it's a bu- there's a bunch of sources mentioning that of course. This also this spills over into Tacitus's history of the Germanic peoples that he's talking about in Germania. Um, he mentions that some of them uh, seem to be coloring their skin as well. Again, we cannot really say if this is tattooing or not. But up until very recently, the oldest evidence of a tattooed person that we know of was from you know the austrian alps um Ötzi, this guy who was found in a glacier right um with tattoos on him um he was from what the late stone age early iron age sorry not iron age bronze age can't remember exactly but around that time so like we know that tattooing was present in europe we know that there are different peoples that have been doing tattooing. And we also know that just like 10 years, I mentioned this before, just like 10 years before the Vikings show up at Lindisfarne, by the way, happy Lindisfarne day, everybody. 
because uh, <laughs> that was this day in 792 or 393. Yeah. Um, it, just like 10 years before, we have like the Northumbrian Ecclesiastical Council basically talking about the difference between uh, pagan tattoos and Christian tattoos. So like it is, it seems like it's present up there in that part of uh, Europe in general. So it would be, you know, likely that the Scandinavians also <laughs> did it. And also, it's just like, you know, any any little teenager can come up with like, hey, let me just like uh, poke you uh, in my basement at the age of 15. All right. <laughs> Where's this just gone? <laughs> in your no, face. <laughs> that conversation took a left turn right at the end. No, I'm just saying, like, if, you know, if you have if we have a sharp object <laughs> and and some kind of coloring around, like, you know, any any teenager could come up with the the idea of like, let's try to put this in your skin, right? <laughs> so I'm kind of thinking, you know, these Vikings they could probably be doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I have I have a friend who did that in her teenage years with a just like a big pen. So mm-hmm. she just poked that in and uh, she asked me to cover it up recently. <laughs> I was like, really? Do you want me to cover it up? It's quite cute. Just like this little horrible looking smiley face that doesn't look like a smiley face anymore. Oh, of course it's a smiley face. <laughs> the one of two things and you can guess what the other one I'm going to say is. <laughs> if you've got two choices of what a, what a teenager is going to draw on themselves, it's a smiley face or a penis. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what it'd be for me. Yeah. Now we know. Now we know exactly uh, what kind of uh, homemade tattoo Dan has somewhere. <laughs> yeah. No. I don't mind doing a tattoo of a penis on you. No. Can't. <laughs> well, maybe one day. Maybe. Just, just for the lols. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. I think. I think they will have been tattooed. There's only. There's only been one person on here who's. Uh, who's gone against it, and that's Luciano um, from Children of Ash. And the problem is, Luciano knows so much about Viking Age artwork that he always, like, I'm always like, oh, if you say no, there must be something to it, though. <laughs> but I, I just uh, can't so, okay, see uh, why they wouldn't. As, 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 an, as like somebody who does research in this field of, like, Viking culture and all that stuff, quite often we make assumptions about pre-Christian Scandinavian culture, Viking culture, all that stuff based off of much less historical evidence than the historical evidence we actually have for tattoos in Scandinavia. We have Ibn Fadlan who says that they are, you know, colored from head to toe in what appears to be verdant trees, right? And then people go like, oh, but he doesn't really say that they're tattooed um, like he's not using a word that that seems to suggest that their skin was pierced with that color, and it's like that's a but, bullshit argument. But, but yeah, like they, right, what was he gonna say? Like, was he gonna use the word tattoo that he exactly. didn't know about? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, was he gonna use the Greek word stigmata? No, no, because he's, <laughs> he's you know speaking Arabic. But yeah. aside from that, also, then people say, well. Okay, so that's only one source. Yeah, and then again, like there's only one source for a lot of other things as well. And and thirdly, people then say, oh, but we don't even know if they were really Scandinavians or something like that. And I'm like, that's also a bullshit argument because you can see structurally and everything else that he tells us about what these people are doing, especially that chieftain's burial, that they're fucking Scandinavians. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, so it's, it's like, it, it, I, I would say that largely that, you know, it, it falls uh, on, uh, you know, either side of the fence of like, do I like the idea of, of whether or not these people were tattooed? That's really where it goes, right? So, uh, how, like Dan being from Britain, uh, you have lots of coal workers mm-hmm. and they're all like decorated in cuts, you know, like black cuts because they, they, they get a, like, a, what's the word for it? <laughs> a, a wound. My English is a bit like rusty at the moment. Yeah, they get a wound and then a little bit of like coal goes into it and mm-hmm. it creates a tattoo. So if it's that easy, are you just like they're just working and they're covered in cuts, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, then, you know, why is it so impossible to think that people back in the day would do the same thing? I no, think I agree. They will have done, sure. I mean, it's actually, totally cool. Uh, am I, scary. 
I would say that the main reason that there is still like a team or that, that there it was a team of scholars in Scandinavia and elsewhere who were very strongly against the idea that they possibly tattoo is mostly because they have sort of like these, you know, uh, late 19th century, early 20th century romantic ideas about what Vikings were, basically that they, uh, you know, uh, were the same as them in some weird way or other, right? So it's all about contemporary nation building and, and building ideas about your ancient history and all that stuff mm-hmm. more than anything else. How so, much do you think like popular culture at the time will influence things like that? Because obviously it's only recently, maybe in the, what, the last 15, 20 years that tattoos have really kind of taken off and been popularized in, in kind of everyday popular popular culture so before that do you think that maybe tattoos been seen negatively could have swayed historians to to look away from the idea Mm. which is kind of sad really you shouldn't be influenced by the times on when looking at history should go by the facts so so think about the early 20th century Uh, what were who who had tattoos in like western society that would be sailors and prostitutes right uh, that kind of stuff, right? So, so n- nice society would be looking at it and judging them. Aside from that, who else would have tattoos? Who would, you know, regular uh, Europeans or white Americans know as tattooed people? Well, uh, some kind of like distant so-called primitive tribe in the Amazon or uh, somewhere else, right? And so that's not nice and white. Bam, there we go. We can't imagine our ancient ancestors not being nice and white. So, um, of course, they didn't tattoo. Of course, they didn't do this. Of course, they didn't do that. And so on and so on and so on. I guess, so, like, the Bible has a lot of say, of say in it as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, I mean, this is... There's, uh, I've also mentioned this before. There's even a theory that the original stigmata that Jesus had and other people might have had uh, was actually tattooing <laughs> so, <laughs> because in ancient Roman society, uh, tattooing was associated with slavery. They tattooed slaves, um, mm-hmm. the Hellenic Greeks as well, but the Thracians north of of uh, Hellas in in what is now Greece proper, um, the Thracians they did tattoo. Uh, there are depictions of them with like these weird like. Um, um, a, triangles on their uh, arms and stuff like that so i mean tattooing has definitely been a thing in europe so oh i'm gonna annoy i'm gonna annoy so many christians with that now <laughs> <laughs> well see this is the thing like even like christian europe has been tattooing a lot mm-hmm. like um it, you know crusader tattoos was a thing back in the 1100s <laughs> Right, mm-hmm. you go to Jerusalem, you fight for for Christianity, you get a nice little Jerusalem cross tattooed right here on your chest. You go back home, right? Um, what was his face? Harold Godwinson, your so-called last Anglo-Saxon king, is said to have had a tattoo on his chest that said England. Oh yeah, um, forgot about that. Yeah, the chaviest tattoo ever. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like that's the that's the one. Uh, I know the Euros is start. I think the Euro, by the time this comes out, I think like the European Championship football thingy will have started, and you can guarantee there's going to be some some drunk men in the pub with Holy that familiar. England England tattoo straight across the chest, yeah. tops off, beer bellies out, really go. upset when England do shit. <laughs> like that's, um, I mean. That's such a bad tattoo. <laughs> like imagine, like imagine, like some someone's having like Denmark, any any country name, like USA across the chest. I'm sure there's a few of them, or any any of them. It's just so bad. It's like what? Dude, there's definitely a lot of like Denmark tattoos that goes like this, just on the, the lower on the belly. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a bit too long to go across the chest. <laughs> It's very popular in Iceland to get the four uh, protectors of Iceland tattooed on them. I think that's that's all right, but like I, I try not to do it as the as the crest. Is it mm. Crest the right word? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I try not to do it as that, you know, literally. But I, I do the so it's like four protectors. There's a bull, there's an eagle, and there's a giant, and there's a dragon. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. if you do that individually, that's like 
the closest I do to like this national pride thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just England's just an odd one. I, I wonder if that's true. I'd love to know whether Harold Gorman had that, like just had England across the chest. Like, a lot. I would love to know if that was real and just look at him and be like, what the fuck have you done? <laughs> Why have you done that? <laughs> you must have been drunk. Because uh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> there's so many people with their own uh, own country's name tattooed on them. It's just, mm-hmm. yeah, well, like, do what you want, man. That's fine. Just, yeah. I don't have to like it, but do what you want. No, absolutely not. I mean, I'm not anti-patriotic, but I'm also not, like, super patriotic to, to like, that kind of level. I'm like, I was just born in this patch of earth. Like, it means very little to me. Like, I want it to, I want it to, th- I guess I want it to thrive and to be nice to other people, but I'm not going to be like, ooh, England's the best. Cause, well, uh, England being nice has, like, that ship has sailed a long time ago. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. You know, we, we're trying to be nice now, with us, I think. Yeah, trying. Yeah. That's, except, like, kicking people out now that I've lived there for years. Just pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, we're not the best. <laughs> I don't think any, to be fair, though, I don't think any country is perfect. Definitely not. I think every, uh, every country has the dark side and uh, does bad things. It's not just us, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, kick, kick the ball to the Dutch or yeah. what the Danes. We're, we suck pretty much too. So yeah. there we are. They all do. Yeah. yeah. Iceland is pretty bad with some parts. Yeah. Like we all, uh, like Denmark has started um, uh, uh, basically expelling its own citizens now. So, so that's that. Wow. Yeah. Because of like these weird, you know, rules about uh, how attached you are to the country and those kinds of things. So there's like this case right now where this guy, he's a Danish guy, he's married to a Filipino woman. They have a child together. The Filipino woman didn't get permanent residency and the child is too young to meet the standard uh, for you know, being so naturally attached to the country, which is like seven years. So the, the oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So immigration is like, yeah, so you better just go to the Philippines and have family family relations like oh oh so we're straight up nazis now thanks it's so like what the fuck it's just so archaic isn't it's just so weird weird that that's it's some uh, fascist bullshit like like imagine being born in a country and just living there i mean even you know especially in, in the usa you get people who who I, even even if you even if your parents snuck over and you were born elite, quote unquote illegally and you lived there for till you were 15 and then they're like oh no you're not really american fuck oh, off it's well, like that's the, what that's like the cool you don't america, know anything if, else if you're born in america you are a citizen here so oh that's the cool thing about that but that's not the same in denmark like uh, yeah i should have that yeah in Denmark, if you're born in Denmark um, to foreign parents, you are not not naturally a citizen. Yeah, so. it's messed up. Mm-hmm. They're kind of kicking out immigrants here who are seeking asylum and just like sending them out uh, to die, basically. And people are outraged. And every time somebody's being sent away and they're like, okay, I will be killed if I go back to that country. Um, people protest and they, they are outraged and then they're like, okay, fine, you can stay. Uh, but it's kind of annoying that we have to do that every single time somebody's being kicked out to, to die. Mm. Like people have to be outraged every single time, just change the policy, let people live, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. At least they're listening to you. That That's not the same <laughs> in Denmark. I, I don't know if they're listening. It's just like they just can't do anything else. People are too mad about right. it so they're like mm-hmm. trying to be re-elected to the... so yeah mm. yeah I mean governments only ever listen when they want your votes other than that they're not <laughs> yep. they're not too bothered um, so now we've got all serious let's move <laughs> on to Icelandic staves and you two can tell us what's what's real what's not what's good what's bad what's oh, ridiculous dear. <laughs> Probably upset a lot of people who've got 
tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think most of the staves are actually ridiculous. Like, okay, there we go. Like the the descriptions on how you're meant to apply them and how you're meant to use them is ridiculous. If you've if you learned anything about staves, then yeah, most of them are not super cool. You know, it's the same as with people who always expect their own spirit animal to be like an eagle or a wolf but it's actually a caterpillar it's the same with the staves <laughs> you kind of use it just like oh yeah use this to make a horse lame or use this as ah uh, yeah to <sighs> what was I? I i had found a stave here that was just well let's talk about something else while i search for this <laughs> i mean i, so... I just want to show you this one Oh. ridiculous staves okay oh, so I this, love this one so this <laughs> is it, it's it's kind of got the arms of the helm of all but yeah. more of them and they're not particularly straight and then a smiley face <laughs> yeah. in the middle but it's not it's kind of like an angry snowman face <laughs> yeah so this got a carrot for a like this one here to see a thief wait where is the camera yeah yeah, so he's like so angry. <laughs> there seems to be. So let's 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 start at the beginning. Um, what is a stave? Like let's let's try and have some structure to it. I get it either. Um, how about or Mateus? Is it? Or, or what's the difference with like an Icelandic stave to a normal stave? Is there a difference? What's what's a stave? All right. Um, okay, so. Hey, Mateus. You can yeah. you can take this. I'll I'll start with some history on this. So so the staves as as we know them um, start appearing in Galtrapeikie. So these uh, um, spell books uh, that are being collected in the 1500s um, because a, a, what we're basically seeing is an increasing worry uh, about witchcraft in all of Europe, right? That's what leads to the burning age in the 1600s. So, so this is happening in Iceland too, where we're, um, we, we, we see these uh, books cropping up um, and mostly as a way to recognize if somebody is a witch, right? Because if you, they have these like, um uh seagulls around then then it's got to be because they're doing dark magic and all that stuff um that's that's why that's why we have access to them today right that that's how they have ended up in books in the first place now um what were they before well um they were part of a common european um uh, uh, mainly uh, christian um with jewish uh, influence of course the type of magic that um, that had developed over centuries, if not millennia, and um, and it, at some point entered Northern Europe with uh, learned individuals of various kinds interested in um, the the types of magic that were circulating back in the medieval period. And keep in mind, in the medieval period, there is a difference between uh, uh, magic. Like, so there is some magic that you can do that is considered acceptable. Um, and divination can, for instance, be an acceptable type of magic because basically what, what you're just fi finding out is sort of like God's plan anyway. So, so as long as you don't interact with, um, with the, the, the demons, um, then, then it's fine. Um, and, and, you know, depending on what time period we're dealing with, there, there are different ideas of like when you enter sort of demon territory. But in the late 1400s, we get to the point where um, where, where we have the Maleus Maleficarum, this uh, the witch's hammer, as it is called. That uh, just this, sounds witchy, right? <laughs> that just sounds like he's going to put a curse on there. Yeah. So, so this is uh, this is the opposite. This is the, the the witch's hammer is. Is uh, is a treatise uh, um, written by two absolute assholes in Germany um, a, 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 to to um, identify and persecute witches, right? And as this book becomes more and more popularized in Europe, it, it's being used in the ecclesiastical schools uh, in different places in Europe, and. Um, 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 that's how basically we then get these modern concepts of 
what witches are and what it means to to be a witch and do magic and de- black magic and all of that stuff right really that's where that comes from and that's why we then see um you know priests and and other officials taking an interest in whether or not um lay people and sometimes also clergy are doing like dark magic and that's how these seagulls then end up in these books mm-hmm. written down as like oh this is an example of how a witch would do this and a witch would do that and so on so that's how you can recognize it. And actually the first Icelandic witch to be burned was this poor guy who was, um, I can't remember his name, but he was um, um, he was accused of having made a boy sick. That's the, that's the us- usual like um, witchcraft curse in Northern Europe. You either made a person sick or uh, people's cattle or something like that. Or you you basically put a curse on them to, so that they die, right? So this poor guy is. Like, <laughs> there are all things that you just can't prove. Yeah, exactly. So it's just like, oh, I got sick. You must have cursed me because you looked to me funny. Exactly, but this is what is called maleficium in sort of uh, the um, the official uh, language about the, all that. So if you commit maleficium, then you're you're a bad witch. Um, and this this is an old like that's all the way back. Um, but uh, but that's like how the curses start. Oh, sorry, not the curse. The persecutions start. They start with these kinds of accusations. And then they get more and more weird after that. But this poor guy um, uh, who might have been, you know, perhaps not fully mentally there uh, based off of what we know, um, the, the, the few things that we know about this guy. Um, but one of the things that, that convinced people that he was a witch was the fact that he had a sheet of paper or vellum, I guess it would have been, so basically derived from cowskin, um, with uh, these um, secret signs on them. And nobody knows what those secret signs actually were, um, but he he had that lying around. And so there's a chance... Was just doodling dr- he was just doodling dick drawings, wasn't it? He could have been doodling dick drawings. And then... And they've just you know, called him a witch. Yes, <laughs> poor so, guy. So that's that's how that's how like this uh, all the witchcraft stuff starts in Iceland. So I I always thought, I mean, I'm I'm an adult now, so I don't think this now, but I used to think when I, I was significantly younger that a witch was a lady and a wizard was a man. Like that was just what I I I didn't grow up in kind of around this stuff, so I was like, oh, a witch is a lady bearing in mind until i was 15 i thought and this is embarrassing so i can't really i'm going to say this but i thought that lions were men and tigers were women and it is <laughs> fucking, i do not know how i got to 15 years old thinking that <laughs> like how nobody how i didn't let that slip and how nobody told me any different but i genuinely thought that lions were just the men and tigers were the women and these were the same thing and how the fuck I got so far? I don't know. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it probably explains a lot about me. <laughs> no, it makes a lot of sense, actually. I think, you know, I. No, it doesn't. They're completely been, different animals. You know, I, I might have been thinking the same way when I was like perhaps a lot younger, but still. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of like recognize like these, like, you know, you're, you're like nine years old and you're, you know, like, yeah, lions are like these cool male figures and, and tigers are these female, like, yeah, yeah. No, it makes, it makes weirdly sense in sort of like a, I grew up with He-Man kind of like w- world uh, to me at least. Uh, so I, yeah, I can see that. Um, <laughs> no, so uh, yeah, witches are both men and women, actually. Uh, it's only in Disney, right, where Merlin is is a wizard, and then we have the the, the, the witch in the woods and all that stuff. Mm. Um, originally, anybody could be accused of witchcraft. Yeah. Usually, women, uh, sort of like on a broad European scale, except for Iceland and Finland. That's where you get majority. Uh, well, in Iceland, you have majority male. And in Finland, you have 50 50. Oh, and the wow. rest of Scandinavia is about 80% female and then 20% male. So I, I never would have expected it to be majority men 
And yeah, I, no, I, there's I, only one woman who's uh, accused and convicted of witchcraft in Iceland. I honestly yeah. thought that it was most cases it was just men trying to get rid of their wives. No, that's, that's I, France. That's France. Uh, France and yeah. Belgium, that's mainly what that's about. But in, uh, yeah. like in Scandinavia, they're, they're really worried about... Um, Equal rights. You know, uh, no, Progressive. Curses, generally. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, in yeah, Iceland so, there was yeah sorry. <laughs> no no go. Yeah, um, in Iceland there was yeah one one woman and it was it was mostly like burnings in Iceland, but that one woman was drowned, where mm. the congress always took place like uh, Althingi, mm-hmm. and the first guy was burnt in nine uh, no sorry sixteen hundred twenty five, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah it was burnt because some some guy accused him of. Um, you know, like bringing up a ghost in his in his house, and it's like no proof. Well, yeah, let's just burn him anyway. That's I, he was, and yeah, the trials or the or the punishments always seem insane to me. It's like, oh well, you know, if she drowns, guess she wasn't a witch. Yeah, if she, she survives, <laughs> she's a witch. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. oh, let's burn her. If she dies, oh, she's not a witch. If she doesn't yeah. burn. Oops. She'll she'll die as a good Christian woman. Yeah. It's like fuck off. I don't want to die. I'd rather just live and not be a witch. Yeah. So the interesting thing about that that one woman who um who was executed for witchcraft in Iceland is that that is actually the only Icelandic case that seems to fall in the same pattern as witchcraft cases from from mainland Scandinavia. Um where we're dealing with, or and especially in Norway, we're dealing with an itinerant woman, not a lot of like, uh, well, she's very poor. She's, um, she's um, traveling with her son. And the thing that she's accused of is actually to fly. And that's one of the only cases of, of flying, which is that you have in Iceland, which is otherwise pretty standard for like go to Norway or Denmark. You have the same thing. Not so much Sweden. Sweden is, is actually a, a, a weird uh, outlier when it comes to witchcraft cases because they all believe in the pact with the devil over there. Um, and it's a very modern thing. The pact with the devil, all that stuff doesn't show up that uh, often in the, the Norwegian and Danish and Icelandic cases. It's more the maleficium stuff where somebody has cursed my cow or cursed my me or something like that. So I love I love uh, Swedish swastikonst. It's very interesting to read about. Mm-hmm. Very much so. <laughs> okay, so back to back to staves. Yeah, so the staves, right? So it sounds almost like a stave is almost like a, I guess a sigil. Mm-hmm. You would so. I guess the, the 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 first question is: Do they link back to the Viking Age? Seen as we are like a no. Viking Age kind of podcast ish, <laughs> but we no. talk about whatever whatever happened. No, you, it's not strictly Viking Age; it's it's modern stuff as well. But so, at what point do you you I guess you both said no? You know, they don't link back to the Viking Age. So, at what point do we get these things becoming Viking Age? I guess in modern culture because if you ask uh, we, the, the helm of awe and the vigacy are the two that are the the most common but shan's going to pull up a, a page in a, in a minute that that shows all these different sigils and staves they've all been attributed in some way to the viking age whether it's odin or you know odin's way to get people to sleep and all these different things so it, it seems like the two have become so intermeshed the where where did that happen? Where did it become one and the same? Because most people who you know don't leave the listen to the podcast or have the opportunity to speak to amazing people like you two, just Google stuff and it comes up and they go, okay, that must be from the Viking Age, because they don't know any 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 different. Mm. Yeah, so there's a couple of things. Um, what we're seeing here on 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 this this little chart that, that we're showing you, it's actually a lot of different uh, uh, symbols um, <laughs> that have sort of like been combined in different ways. Um, so, just, I was, I- just for for anybody listening, um, if you Google, I think I just Google like Icelandic stave, and this was the first image that came up. Um, so it's. It's an image of one, two, three, four, five. 
<laughs> Nine or something. No, no, it's more than nine. What kind Yeah. of maths are you working on? I don't know. <laughs> I, hey, I'm a literature 14. scholar. So there's, I, I there's, can't count. there's, so there's, yeah, there's 14 on here. Um, and more, I think most people listening to this will have seen these. So as we, as we kind of move through them, I guess. Well, few of them are pine rooms and not staves. That's Exactly. yeah. Yeah. That's what we're seeing in the lowest line. So, so we have... Uh, the one that says Gibu Aoya, which means good luck. Um, Mm um, that one seems uh, uh, that's very similar to the ones that we can find on the Rurk stone from, from Sweden from the 700s. Um, then we have next to it, we have two bind runes, which, you know, anybody can make. And, um, and, and then we have a... Um, A, a seagull from from an Icelandic manuscript, and then we have another bind rune. So, so like somebody has decided here to like basically combine uh, diff different things. Mm -hmm. So what would So, be the difference between like a stave and a bind room? um, the main difference is that the the bind runes are very few and far between. The ones that do exist, they show up in carvings in the Viking Age. Um, And then, then they they don't really show up until again in the like the late nineteenth century, um, where people start um, you know dabbling in these things again. Um, it, I mean, there are some examples here and there, but it's 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 a very very elusive tradition, so to speak, um, and it's also very complicated to say. one simple thing about what they are uh mostly it kind of looks like a space saving issue Okay. Okay. uh, so like basically um you can you can write runes for instance um with, with that one down in the, the left uh, lower left corner right you make a make a cross like that and then you add um um arms Uh, to the sides on on it, right, and then you can basically um, a, by counting, you can see what kind of letter it is supposed to be in the runic um, alphabet or futhark, right? And so that's like a code way of writing runes, and that's like that 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 seems to be you, know, you could call it sort of like a, a cryptic alphabet or whatever. But it, you could also just call it somebody trying to save space, you know. <laughs> okay so it's like you, you, it doesn't necessarily have to carry some kind of like deep mystical meaning, if you know what I mean, right? okay okay um have a what about this is this is one that i want to know about the one that said odin's illusionary rune camouflage and deception now th what the fuck is that is I. that I haven't seen that one before, so I have no idea what the source is. But yeah, I have no idea like where where the person found that one. So Because these these are it's ones that people will, I guarantee, and it might be shitty, or no, the, there will be some people who've looked at this and then got that tattooed on them somewhere, yeah. somewhere they were, cause, because this is the first, so like I said, I just, I just put Google up, Icelandic staves, and this was, the this is kind of like the list that came up. There was a, another list that had oh, a bunch more in it. But this is the one that I've seen before. Um, so I imagine so many other people will have just Googled it, found these, and they will look at them and go, okay, yeah, I don't know any difference. So I guess the, the from the baggage, because it is very overwhelming when you do start to learn this stuff. Um, I think it might actually be from the Hult manuscript. Um, I have seen it before, um, okay. but but I can't remember where. I was just going through. It could also be in uh, in in in, in 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 the Sorcerer's Screed. Um, It's not in there. It's not in It's not either in either. one I have. So it might be from like a an another book or an older book. Yeah, So I'm you just pretty wonder, sure like, I've seen it in the in a in a in a it, no, yeah, seventeenth century manuscript. It could be from, um, but yeah, no, it's uh, I do not remember that it has anything to do with okay. Odin and that one. You just wonder, like, somebody must maybe find these and put together this 
this little image of 14 staves or, and bind room, and mm. then it gets lost on the internet and becomes infamous, I guess. And how do you take it back when there's so much, you know, on the on these on this one little piece of paper or, or screen, there's so much yeah. misinformation. How do you ever put that back in Pandora's box? <laughs> I don't think we will. No. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, when people come to me, they either know exactly which stave they want, or they ask me to suggest someone some stave, or I use the bind rooms actually as like a, a symbol mm-hmm. of what they need. So I take the Futhark, it's like either Futhark or younger Futhark or the Icelandic rooms. And I find like what the person needs and puzzle that together. So that's like entirely just for that person. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's what they did, you know, when they did the bind rooms first, like if they were making um, like a cryptic script, like Matthias said, or if they were using it as like a magical stave. So I don't think we will find that out. No. Um, so, yeah, it's um, if you just go to somebody that knows knows their stuff about the staves then uh you'll get what you want otherwise just take it off the internet and hope (laughs) it's the right thing you know (laughs) that's it yeah exactly i mean this the the other one that i see a lot is the the hardest one to pronounce fifth thorn it's the sleep the sleep thorn and i see i've seen that quite often Uh, yeah it's really pretty place beneath the pillow or bed for restful sleep and it almost looks like four keys I guess. Um, is that real? Is yes, that like a, that's a okay. real one. Okay. I feel like we're getting... I, getting I, guess, I guess they would need their good sleep, with, like sleeping in a horrible situation they, they did in Iceland. Mm-hmm. It's like a, in a cave or a dirty floor, you know, like with their cattle to keep mm-hmm. them warm. And uh, just the smell and the, the stink and ugh, I can't even imagine. So... <laughs> I guess you would meet, need some help with helping you sleep. I mean, we all can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I get. I mean, when we say the real, they're not. I guess they're not Viking age anymore. No like sixteenth and seventeenth century. It, okay. It started like around that time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and that's the thing. Like, the, it's a real tradition, right? Um, that it's a real uh, both folk and learned tradition in Iceland um, and also elsewhere in Europe. So, I mean, in that sense, it's, it's still pretty fucking cool. <laughs> like, yeah, people I think died for these. They yeah. died if they were found with any, you know, script or books or anything that contains magical staves. Mm-hmm. So this was literally a life-threatening thing mm-hmm. to do like just to have something to help you sleep okay. so it's uh, yeah it's pretty cool that people were you know willing to sacrifice themselves just to like do the magic mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no it's yeah it's amazing but i think also people need to understand what they what they're getting as well um like it's it it's an amazing thing in itself but like you said before it's it's like a 1600s kind of magical stave whereas so many people will just assume that the viking age and link the two together but equally i don't know how you would ever kind of separate the two and i guess the the biggest examples of that are the helm of awe and i'm not going to try to pronounce it and the vegvisia um like those two are so iconic now with the with the viking age but also the not quite Viking symbols, I guess. <laughs> the, mm. You know, the the modern book. But so many people think that they are. And uh yeah, it's they're they're definitely the the worst offenders. They're they're the mainstreamest ones, <laughs> if I can word it that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's um I've I've even seen values are used in, in this horrible uh horror film that me and Sarah Brother watched, um, as like to ward of demons so they're just yeah. like oh okay to google magical symbols just like picked up Vagavisir and put it in their movie mm-hmm. so i was like well, okay I well think, yeah i think i've seen that movie <laughs> what movie is it do we know the name ah, I, I don't remember i actually yeah it, it, 
it is was it, fun to watch it, but it was quite bad. Is it the ritual? Is that oh, okay? The no, one where it's the, not that one. No. That one? no, that's the one where they're walking down. Uh, Kung, Kung that, uh, yeah, I think I think Kung this Kung one the... is Spanish. The the horror film okay, that I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think of Spanish horror films. Not that I know yeah. many. Oh, they 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 can be really really good. Yeah. Yeah. They can. Yeah. I know Rec. Rec's probably the only Spanish one that I think Spanish. Is Rec Spanish? Mm. I think. It, yeah. I, th- I think it was. Could be. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe. Um, yeah. So those those two, I think we've spoke about it. Spoke about them both. Ad nauseum on the podcast before. Um, yeah. Obviously, so many people just assume that they're that they're from the Viking Age, but I guess it's one of these things where it's almost a self fulfilling prophecy that whilst they're not strictly from the Viking Age, they are certainly part of Viking, like modern kind of Viking culture and th- this whole rebirth of. So, what I don't know, what do you do with those two symbols, like? Uh, well, I explain it. If people come and want ISL Mirror Revisit, it's like completely fine with me. I love doing it every time. I, I think it's beautiful. Like both the symbols are very beautiful mm-hmm. and very aesthetically pleasing on somebody's skin. Mm-hmm. But like, if they don't know anything about it, we talk about it and I explain like, oh, it's from the 16th or 17th century. It's uh, not Viking at all. It's completely Icelandic and it's, uh, you know, it's for this purpose. So I don't, I don't really think it matters that much that people think it's Viking Age. It's like, just people don't know better because it's been advertised as that, and it's even been used on some Viking shows and mm-hmm. oh, stuff sure. like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm obviously one to frequent the, the Facebook groups, and if you ever see, <laughs> if you ever see a tattoo of a Vegvisia or Helm of Or. I go in there just for the comments because I know for a fact there's going to be somebody in there going, "That's not a Viking Age symbol." Uh, and well, then, actually, yeah, there's going to be there's going to be that person every time. It, I was sometimes it's me, but it's not it's not even me because <laughs> I'm it's, I'm not that it's bad. It's fine to educate people. Like it's like people can educate, but it's like some people just take offense to it, even though you're not trying to be smart. This is like, oh yeah, this is actually this this thing. And people get super offended and they start arguing and it's hilarious to read. <laughs> so, yeah, the, those ones definitely, definitely do do that. They seem to bring bring something out in people. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I like them both. I think they're both. Amazing. I mean, I've carved both of those on hundreds of horns at this point. And it's Have by you far carved them on your, the prow of your Viking ship so that you can always find your way home. That's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like those those ones are by far the best seller for us as well. Like without a doubt, those two we sell more than anything else. Um, and like funny enough, like if anything that's traditionally like Viking artwork never sells as well. <laughs> And it's, mm. it's it's frustrating. We say, well, then they, you know, I also I have to be a business because I need to eat. Um, so it's um, it's it's a tough one, I think. Well, it's a, there's always going to be uneducated people that don't want to put any effort in in researching what mm-hmm. they want marked on their body forever. So they they just have to have that stave and not know anything about it and England's across the other chest, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No one please ever get England across the chest. <laughs> <laughs> After our episode with Maria, I'm still waiting for someone to get my face towed on them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for it. It's going to happen one day. <laughs> um, okay, so... Icelandic staves are not Viking Age. They are, what do you say, between 1400 and 1600? 16 to 1700, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so they, they're quite a way mm-hmm. off. So do you think that this connection to the Viking Age is because they come from Iceland? And obviously Iceland was kind of founded by the Vikings or at least, you know, people from Scandinavia. So people we go, okay, anything from Iceland. Them is viking 
we can thank the Icelandic tourist industry for all of that. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and Björk as well. Yeah, so, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. The Icelandic tourist um, machine is good. <laughs> they know what they're doing. They know how to get people. It is a well. <laughs> yeah, they definitely know how to market Iceland, especially in in America. It's like mm. uh, I get I get so many Americans walking in. To the studio and asking for you know some symbols and stuff so oh there's a lot of americans coming here <laughs> and they're mostly like very polite um yeah so that's nice but iceland is definitely getting full of tourists all the time <laughs> and you know mm-hmm. it's kind of tiring sometimes if you want to go and look at your own country and you have to kind of like navigate through a crowd of people mm-hmm. yeah but i yeah. guess that's just the reality now it's yeah it's it's frustrating because it, yeah it's annoying me, me and sarah went for a, a walk the other day and it was half term for the kids over here so we we um i, t- I wanted to go to fountains abbey which is a cistercian abbey from uh 1200s um it's a really beautiful place but apparently even though it's outside they only allow so many people in because of covid which mm. is fucking ridiculous because it's outside so we went down the road to a place called binham rocks um it's this really cool like natural stones i guess that have been eroded over time and it must have been three times the amount of people that were up the road where they wouldn't let us in but this was an open open air so no one really judged it um and it was so incredibly busy and mm. there's loads of kids there and i was away walking around i'm like fucking there's all these people here and all these kids but i'm like but I'm here, so I can't really complain because I'm here walking around. I'm one of these idiots. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah, no, we don't count. Don't don't count us in. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's like, oh, all these people walking around my lovely Yorkshire. Like, fuck yeah. off. It's like, yeah, but I'm here. So, But it does get frustrating, but equally, I guess with Iceland, the, I mean, with the, money, Iceland, the money from tourism also helps. With, with yeah, Iceland, it's sort of, so it's a weird double-edged sword, right? Because on the one hand, uh, you're making a fuck ton of money on tourists. On the other mm-hmm. hand, they're part of destroying the ecosystem at this point. Like we're yeah. seeing so many and, issues with that. And all the all the buildings and all the roads and everything they're building so tourists can get to the places easier. Mm-hmm. It's it's like it's gonna ruin the landscape bit by bit. Mm-hmm. And it's not gonna be like when I was a child, we would go on school trips and visit, you know, Geysir and all those mm-hmm. places that you know about with Foss. And we had to walk a long way to get there. There wasn't a parking spot like right there next to it. And like a big thing where you could buy ice cream and a shitty oh, little yeah. Vegaviser thing, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> yeah, we... now it's just bit by bit, like the volcano, they're working on building like this huge uh, thing like for cars to, so you don't have to walk that far. Are you yeah. serious? Are, you, are they literally yeah. like building in, a tourist infrastructure for a volcano? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. People oh, don't people don't want to walk anymore. No, like, like my friend, my my friend went the next day after it started erupting, and her and her friend they had to walk like they they didn't know exactly where to go, and they had to mm-hmm. kind of like she's she's an experienced uh, walker, you know, like she she goes on hikes all the time, so she was safe. But like they walked for three hours there and then three hours back, mm-hmm. and when me and Seuba they went the other day, I think they'd made like a new new like a uh, walkabout so that you go like around it around the volcano instead of going up this massively steep thing but it was still mm-hmm. like three hills to get there and it took us about like uh, approximately one and a half to two hours one mm-hmm. way mm-hmm. and then the same back but yeah like now it's they're gonna shorten it even to like one hour which is <laughs> crazy yeah so, like it's, where are they yeah. building this <laughs> no it's <sighs> yeah it's, it's... Because obviously when we came over, we did all the touristy stuff because it was the first time we'd been to to Iceland. Um, and it, yeah, I, looking back, it is surprising how close the car parks are mm-hmm. to everything, especially the, uh, you, you say so much better than me, gay, gay geezer? Gay, gay, gay Yeah, that one. <laughs> like that. Gay, you, sir. So that, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so with that, like, gay you, sir. It, <laughs> if, if you're looking yeah. in one direction, it's it's beautiful. But then, like, you you turn ninety degrees, hundred eighty degrees, then there's like your big whole touristy 
type shop and yeah everything. like hotel and shop and mm-hmm. parking lot and people oh the people oh the people <laughs> that's it. first time first time i was uh, that i saw casey was in uh uh 2010 or something like that and and then last time was in 2017 i think right and in between, like the like the tourist infrastructure around it just like exploded, mm-hmm. and it was right. like, yeah, like I remember in 2010, you could go there, there wouldn't be that many people around, and nothing, you know, like that. And then this time, it was like I can't get anywhere for it. like all these Chinese tourists that mm-hmm. are just like they're like, swarming everything. It was like holy shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we. <laughs> Because there was a there was a snowstorm when we were there, so there were a couple of days when we couldn't go where we wanted to, and the one day it kind of cleared up. We went to again. I'm going to butcher it. Uh, Thing Thingvilla, Thingvilla, yeah, that's where the Althingi was held. Yes, yeah, so uh, we the Congress. We went there, and I guess like it's part of the the tour, the tour route that people yeah. go on. But Golden a lot of people, Circle. That's mm. it, and a lot of the people don't have a fucking clue what it is. Like they <laughs> just went because it was a pretty park. And yeah. there's me like a little kid going now. Oh my god! Like this is the fucking the rock. This is the stone. Like like the little thing, and everyone's just walking past, and I'm like, how Here can you appreci- appreciate this stone? Like, yeah. um, and, and there, there's actually the the little um, hill, as we call it, that where the witch was drowned. So, mm-hmm. you, like, if you didn't know that already, yeah, no, this. Uh, I mean, that's that uh, that pond that's there. Like, yeah, pond. Uh, it used to be, uh, 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 at least according to like legend, like where you know people were sacrificed. Also, in, yeah, it's called Trekkingar uh, Hillish, which means yeah. like drowning pond. Yes, yeah. So that that's pretty cool too. I mean, that that was definitely <laughs> the, the the one thing that I really liked to to. <laughs> that that was why I went there the first time. You like you like that part. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I need to see the drowning pool. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I, th- I think it says a lot that you like um, that you have like so many uh, uh, um, tourists that come from so far away, right? Like at this point, you know, it's it used. It started to be like just European tourists, right? Mm-hmm. And then, then it expanded to American tourists, and now there's like a whole industry that's bringing people from China, in particular, mm-hmm. to Iceland, mm-hmm. and it's just. It says a lot about like how much this has grown, and uh, also the impact that it, it that it has on Iceland now. I think. I, I don't yeah, think there's... that's just Iceland. I think that's no. uh, certainly in the UK there is a huge influx of kind of like Chinese tourists. Right. I think uh, that's uh, like Huddersfield, yeah. my, the, the town I'm from. We have a, a huge kind of like Chinese uh, student base, so it's very. I think it's very much. I mean, the Chinese have got some money. <laughs> so, oh yeah, no, I mean, that's a it, like I, I think it's fair if you <laughs> want to go and see the world uh, from any country, right? Um, but I think it, um, you know, when you're dealing with such a small country as, as Iceland, right, is it becomes really hard to maintain some kind of like you know social integrity over time mm-hmm. if, when when the country is is constantly flooded with people who come there and stay for a week and go see all of these different places and then leave again. And I mean, the only thing that really can prevent them from doing that nowadays is a blizzard. <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> or a volcano, did... like a bigger volcano. Would be nice. A bigger volcano, like, you know, an a kind of situation. Or Hakla. If Hakla would uh, erupt, that would mean <laughs> the world is fucked, basically. Katla. Katla. That's, Katla, that's yes, the, of course. That's yeah. the scary that's, one. <laughs> that's what I, mean, I meant. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, bl- the blizzard didn't keep too many people away when I was there. We yeah, well, we set go. off to try and have a look, and then we were like, ah, you can't go down. No. I mean, the road system in Iceland is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I've driven in a few countries, but by far they have the best system of you can look. You can, like, you've got a website, you look on it, and it tells you which roads are open, closed, gives you a traffic light system of uh, how safe it is to drive on there but typically tourists fucking ignore it because yeah. i i stopped and he said the road was closed i was like no you know we'll go back we'll come back tomorrow and there were people just going down that going like, for it yeah like no a, we have a we have a 
like volunteers here in Iceland, like a rescue team. And they work 24-7 in saving people and, you know, saving houses and everything when there's a blizzard. Mm -hmm. And they, they just do fantastic work. And I feel like lots of tourists are really abusing that because they don't charge people for it. And I think they should really start finding people that ignore, oh, yeah. you know, that ignore the news. Like, okay, just don't go there because you're going to get stuck mm -hmm. and you're, you might just like freeze to death. I, don't, um, I always wonder, yeah. I don't know whether it's that people are ignorant or people are dumb. And I don't know which one it is because they, people will just drive past and go, oh, well, that doesn't either. Either it's, they'll say, I didn't see it or that it's probably not going to happen to me or how bad can it be? I mean, you're I in didn't Iceland. I think it was that bad. Yeah, yeah it's not going to be that, like, because they come from either England or like, the USA, maybe where. It, or it's certainly parts where they don't have to deal with a lot of snow. But I've never seen snow like it. When we were there, you, I know that we were struggling to land. Um, we weren't sure whether we were going to be able to land because the, they were talking about showing the airports with the, with the snow. And there was one point where we went to get we went to, to get a coffee from the little place by the, by the harbour. Mm -hmm. And I have even just walking, what, well, maybe it was 50 metres from the car to the coffee place. I have never known snow like it in my life. That, like, that means you were in real Iceland. It's like, it's it's really fun to experience. It was scary. You know? It was actually quite scary of how bad the snow was. Like, we weren't even walking far. And I was like, fuck this. Yeah, you have to you have to kind of keep your your neck down and, like, shield your face because yeah. otherwise you're just slapped in the face by snow mm -hmm. from so, the side. These little hard pins that just, like... <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's like yeah, this, no, this, this is proper snow not like yeah. this shit we get over here <laughs> no it's um uh yeah and like the Icelandic winds holy shit like they move trucks sometimes <laughs> yeah they are hurricane forces even though we don't have hurricanes yeah yeah and yeah, you no, guys and and you guys fucking just drive on it like it's nothing <laughs> I got into the car <laughs> and I had this jeep with, with snow tires on and I was like a little bit tentative and there's people in like i don't know just like small saloon cars just, just normal cars just flying past me and i'm like well if, you, if you learn how to drive in that situation you know like how how uh, fast is you know um safe mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you just learn how to respect the nature you just have to respect the boundaries that the nature sets and um mm -hmm. lots of people like so many tourists come here in iceland and they they ignore the signs that say like danger don't go near like don't go further than this and to the ocean and you know they just go uh, further and they drown they get sucked in by the ocean especially in Vik where they have the black beach mm -hmm. um so many tourists have died oh, there it's... It's, it's very crazy yeah um, and then i bet it's it, it's iceland's fault for not putting up a solid wall that you can't get around <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, the beauty the you can't is. sue anyone for you know like what are you going to sue the ocean what you know they'll, you, they'll, there's I'm a sign there i'm sure they'll try sue somebody for the sign not being big enough yeah or strong enough or neon enough because even when <laughs> we went to we went to um and i've forgotten the name the the it's the waterfall that's also on the golden circle yeah, good for yeah so we went up there and, that, and i've got to say that's the that's the most beautiful thing i've ever seen because it was kind of like half frozen when we were there and it was starting mm. to melt in big chunks. Um, but even then, there were some parts of it that were closed because of the time of year and the weather. And they obviously weren't safe. And you could just see people, oh, I'm not, not step yeah, over the sign. Over it, yeah. yeah, climb over the sign, walk down there because they want a picture for, for Instagram. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on in your head? Yep. This sign says, don't go there. And you're like, well, that doesn't apply to me. Like yeah, well, all these other people here doesn't apply to me. I think it's people thinking they're immortal. Like I had that when I was a teenager and you could jump over things and, you know, yeah. like uh, do everything, skate without fearing for your life like I do now. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and they, they go over the, the cables that are marked, like don't go further than this. They go over it and they slip and they die. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, it's terrible. That's like um, it was just on the news the like yesterday i read it that some guy jumped up on 
uh, a piece of lava, like a fresh lava chunk. I saw a picture of that, I think. Yeah, with like, with like, um, just like a liquid lava underneath it. Like if that would have given in, he would have melted in like seconds. Yeah, you burst into flames. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's so crazy. I mean, for the Instagram, that's what he's doing yeah, on the ground. I bet he made a really cool fucking Instagram story, though, didn't it? Oh, right. Well, it's probably going to get smolded for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we get it here too. We have like Colorado has a bunch of tourists, right? Um, because there's so much outdoor stuff, and in the winter time, it's it's as as hazardous as in in Iceland, um, at least on the bad days. Um, but uh, more so, our main problem is that we have a bunch of like you know dangerous animals like bears and and moose and and shit like that and yeah you <laughs> you must get people who are like oh it's a teddy That's bear fine. it's yeah. a teddy bear like i saw a herd of bisons uh in colorado that was yeah. amazing and it was actually behind the fence so we could actually walk quite close up to them mm-hmm. without dying yep. but <laughs> yeah. like yeah it's like you just don't mess don't mess oh. with nature no, no. Te- like I mean- in, in yellowstone it was i was in yellowstone a couple of years ago uh up in wyoming and um and the bison there, they get like really close. They're they're all around. Like, and mm. we were right by the visitor center. We were walking down this little path, and just next to the path, there's like this huge fucking buffalo <laughs> just standing oh. there. And oh. we're like, okay, let's uh, let's just you know go back. And but there was like all these tourists that were just like walking around and everything. Oh, no. Just for, just for uh, 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 what what are they called? Uh, um, nature guy uh why am i blanking on tour guide person yes, keeper yes yeah, yes yeah, some 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 like uh caretaker park ranger park ranger, park ranger exactly yes. he was like <laughs> running at them like get away from there <laughs> like of course. back up back up people it's like are... if that thing had just like charged at them they would have been flat like what yep. the fuck? <laughs> people are insane oh. because it doesn't have teeth or like it's a big scary tiger, then like, oh yeah, it won't hurt me. Look how cute and cuddly it is. Or oh, look how soft it's our door silence. It's like, no, that thing will fucking stampede you. Yeah. You've not seen Lion King, what it does to uh yeah, does, it move, does it move faster <laughs> than it that it stamp that gets yeah. stampeded? <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's uh let's wrap this one up. I think we this might be touching the longest episode we've done so far. Oh yeah. And I genuinely oh. feel like we could keep on talking, but Shan's just popped up and said the the meeting's gonna end soon. I don't oh, want it no. to just don't want to just cut us out. <laughs> well, Sirupo is actually just here. Um, should he sit down with us for five minutes? Sirupo can come say hello. Yeah, Sirupo, come on. <laughs> it's just been sitting here, um, burning into a horn, and the smell is atrocious. Oh my god, <laughs> oh, so bet. bad. So I've just been like trying to, <laughs> you know, keep it. In. <laughs> so yeah, uh, do you want to show them the horn? Oh, yeah, sure. It's fucking cool. Oh, there we go. Nice. Oh, it smells so bad. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I bet. Oh. I bet. Have you have you been burning into it rather than carving into it? Yeah, this one I'm I'm because it's so thin. But it's mm. it's huge. It's it's almost big, as big as my leg. So yeah, it's a blowing horn, yeah. not a drinking horn. Yeah, yeah. The, the smell is horrendous. Oh yeah, yeah I, it's like just him being close to me. It's just oh. <laughs> I can certainly oh, appreciate. No. I can appreciate how bad the smell is. <laughs> how are you doing? What's up? We're good. How are you? I'm all right. I, I just stink apparently. Yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just been discussing how uh, tourists are stupid yeah. in Iceland <laughs> and elsewhere. Well, I mean, Icelandic tourists are pretty stupid in Iceland. As yeah, well. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and they're yeah. awful in other places as well. Yeah. We we always just like keep our head down if we hear somebody speaking Icelandic. It's We're not like... exempt from the being human rule. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh, speaking of Icelandic tourists, uh, one thing I love is Icelandic tourists in Copenhagen. <laughs> Walking down the main street talking shit about Danes, <laughs> yeah. Icelandic, thinking nobody can understand them. <laughs> yeah, it's happened quite often. I, I'm guilty of this because uh, <laughs> me and my friends were discussing some very, very private matters in a bar somewhere like underneath a bridge in England. 
And there's just like few people in there. And she was telling me all this stuff her and her guy friends were doing. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, somebody walked past and was like, oh, so nice hearing Icelandic. And I was like, oh, <laughs> did you hear of that? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I imagine that's, uh, you almost pinpoint on that as well. So you can be further away and hear it. Because I know if, if I'm ever anywhere and you hear somebody speaking English, you kind of hone in on it. And you can hear yeah. it from even further away. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't he think there's any... not to hear anything, so that was pretty nice of him. <laughs> I don't think there's any tourists worse than the English. I mean, we fucking suck. I don't know about it necessarily in Iceland, but especially in like the Mediterranean countries or <sighs> kind of like around Spain, Portugal, the Canary Islands, those kind of places... You're getting the people with the England tattoo on the chest, and they uh, they don't give a shit about uh, anything. They're the getting hen parties. Oh my god! The hen dudes, the stag dudes, the uh. the dudes that are just getting drunk, shitting on the floor, just at uh, just <laughs> it's on just the floor. <laughs> man, it's just it happens. It is just unreal. Like it's English tourists. I, th- I mean, not all English tourists are bad. But I think there's these certain places in in Europe that are nice and sunny where yeah. they go and it's cheap alcohol and they just ruin the place. I think it's just a certain type of person. It's like it's mm-hmm. in every country. They just yeah. they are just terrible. We actually have a sign in a town called Stickisholmer here where it's like a guy hoping and just like a, a, a crossover like no pooping yeah, sign. There used to be mm. plenty of people just taking a shit wherever they wanted. Yeah. Imagine how there. how many people have to shit before you have to put up a sign saying do not shit. Oh, just loads. please don't shit here. Like please. <laughs> yeah. Like that has to be there has to be <laughs> so actually, many people. Um there, there's a couple of places here in Colorado where you also see those signs. Um mostly signs uh, indicating what you can and cannot do on top of a toilet. <laughs> oh okay. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen those. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Okay, we uh, really do need to to wrap this up because it's okay. Gonna, let's stop it's... talking about poop. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want it to cut out, cut out, and there be no end. Um, how about where can everybody find you and your lovely work? Uh, uh, on my website, there's all the information. It's habanero tattoo.com So it's H A B B A tattoo. Mm-hmm. It's like habanero tattoo. <laughs> And yeah, it's like you can go to all my platforms for there. I I mostly use Instagram, so mm-hmm. yeah. obviously you can find the lovely Sigur body who jumped in as well. Sigur yeah. body on on hey. Instagram. Yeah, I'm only on Instagram. He needs a website. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's too modest. He is. He's a talented man. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Well, he's <laughs> he's another Takes one to no one. <laughs> he's has another podcast with you guys. Absolutely. Anytime. Yeah. Sigurd is welcome by anytime. Yeah. Um, Matthias, where can everybody find you? You can always find me on Instagram. Please don't send me friend requests on Facebook. <laughs> Which means friend requests on Facebook. Yeah, no, it's fine. Friend requests on Facebook. <laughs> have you heard... from that, I have to plug my, my new research book, uh, okay. Volcanoes in Old Norse Mythology, um, A Myth and Environment in Early Iceland. It's my research book. Um, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg and once 500 people as I also mentioned in the uh, podcast group once 500 people have bought it then royalties will pay enough out so that I can get a pack of cigarettes if I go to Wyoming and it's just a big deal (laughs) there you go go. taxes are lower up there so everybody everybody buy it (laughs) where can people get it uh, you can get it if you search Amsterdam University Press and Volcanoes and Old Norse Mythology. Or wow, Archimedes. you really want nobody to buy this, don't you? Oh, hell yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, well, you I'll get one. You could at least come with it. We'll, you know what? We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, I'll get you. a link off my tears. We'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll make sure people can, <laughs> can find it. <laughs> I'm going to try and quickly do our stuff before it just cuts out and the episode ends. Uh, if, if you enjoy if you enjoy the show please leave us a five star rating a positive review uh, I think we're on like 193 um, I think we've had like two bad ones 
from <laughs> shitty people. It's not too bad, you know, we're on 4.8%. So we're doing we're doing all right. Um, yeah, so let's try and push it to 200. That would be nice. Um, also, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or our web- websites, all just at Nordic Mythology Podcast. Um, oh, we have a new Facebook group where we just... Seems to just oh, be a shit. group talking shit about me, to be honest. <laughs> like, I just seem to take a lot of heat on there. Um, so, yeah, just that's literally just Naughty like Mythology fun. Podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's Naughty Mythology Podcast uh, Facebook group. We will accept you if you can pass the secret questions. Um, and it's just good fun. It's one of the, it's one of the uh, good Facebook groups left, I guess, before it gets ruined by other people, which I'm sure it will do at some point. <laughs> Um, yeah, oh, we're pushing the YouTube. So if you enjoy the show, please pop over to the YouTube channel, Nordic Mythology Podcast, hit subscribe. Uh, we're going to start putting a bunch of sort of three, four minute videos on there, some nice short clips. And I think that's it. I think we're uh, we're good to go. Nice. Haba, thank you very much. Sigabody, thank you for, for jumping on for the last few minutes. Oh, sure. Yeah, thank you for having us. It's uh, well. Uh- Actually, I have a question for Matthias. Uh, are you coming to Iceland? True. I'm, uh, I hope so. If uh, American immigration will let me travel at some point. Are the legends true? Well, there's plenty of American tourists here yeah. already. Yes. yes, but it's immigration stuff. So Bring a book. Oh, right. Bring a book. <laughs> yeah. But like, were you, were you planning on doing some lectures or you're just going to come over? Um, there's the Norse mythology uh, conference that's happening in Reykjavik. Oh, great. When is that? Uh, late November, right? It's like November 25th, 27th. Oh, okay. That's so, yeah. Way in that, the future. That is gonna, uh, in the future, yes. <laughs> you got to tell them to stop using the word Norse. Oh, yeah. yeah I was going to say. <laughs> getting to... Stop saying Norse. <laughs> Norse. <laughs> that's... When you when you go up to do your speech, that should just be it. <laughs> That's it, and just just walk out. Yeah, no, I mean, I uh, I am scheduled to give a talk at that conference, um, but um, there might be a slight immigration issue, uh, so we'll see about that. <laughs> if 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 you're going to Iceland in November, then I'm going to come to Iceland in November. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. please come. Mm-hmm. We'll have a party. So yes. so so you want people to stop saying Norse and start saying. Nordic, and then, uh, so well, so a horse would be Hordic. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go for that. <laughs> hey. uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently the uh, the episode didn't explode when it went past our a lot of times. So nice. <laughs> we we don't need to worry. Okay, perfect. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's wrap it. We we're gonna go and record our. Vikings watch along show that we do every week, which we put on, which is for our patrons. Me and Mateus sit down and watch an episode of Vikings each week and let everybody know our thoughts. Mateus lets everyone, Mateus lets everyone know what's real and what's not real. And I just mm. laugh at people's bald caps. That's pretty much <laughs> the theme so far. <laughs> and it's, it's working. It's good fun. So if you want to, if you want to watch that, please just pause on any level on Patreon. You get access to that. Um, and we record it straight after the main show every week. And that's it. That's the show. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It was really fun. <laughs>